what I look at is, is truly, yes, you know, you have to be aware um, of how it's used, what floor you went down on. Um, you have to be aware of, you know, one of, the, one of George's examples was a hard steel trowel floor that had been wet cured, putting down a sodium silicate and testing it two hours later. That's not real world. That's not an expectation time. And again, the tighter the floor is, if you have a, a wet cure and you have an extremely tight floor, that's absolutely going to minimize your reaction and what you get. How the floor is finished, whether it be, again, the mix, how tight, whether how it's cured, are there post or pre admixtures or hardening products put in? Um, calcium chloride accelerators interfere with the dense fire working. These are all things you have to know. And if you don't know exactly how that floor went down, you never know why something works. And even if you only get a two or three for four percent abrasion resistance increase, but you get all the other benefits of the densifier, you're still being successful. If it will only increase that much, that means you were 95% already as hard as you're going to get with that floor. But there are so many floors that you never know if the mix ratio is correct, if it was put down correctly. You don't know if that truck, instead of the hour and a half, which is generally the maximum you prefer to before you get it out of the truck, it may have been three hours. The guys may have been throwing water and, and they were tired and they wanted to have it work. So there, there are a lot of factors, but as I said, and, and George didn't see, George, what I did was use examples with acid stains that my jobs and that I got them because coatings failed and showing pictures of them from 2002, 2005 and this year and the fact that there's no wear. And that in my jobs and both having been an applicator that I trained over 400 people just to do acid stains and, and polishing. And so I look at the real world of what actually has worked on the floors of millions and millions and millions and millions of square feet. Um, and on that note, I'm going to hand this back to you. Good. Thanks, Peter. Um, so, um, so George, I would, uh, I guess the, um, the general um, Peter's argument is that there are, uh, there are applications where these um, uh, hardener dense silicates may indeed uh, provide a value to a floor surface. So um, have you seen that? Have you ha had you see some value in using the silicate hardener densifiers? Well, I, 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 I won't directly refute that argument. I won't say that they can't help and that they can't, under some circumstances, improve the wear resistance of concrete. But I have to confess that I personally have not seen it. And that's why I wrote the article that, that prompted this debate. Um, I did not get into this field with any kind of axe to grind. Um, I didn't come in to try to prove that hardeners worked. I had no interest in proving that they didn't work. Uh, when I was first exposed to hardeners, I assumed that the claims made for them were correct because I had no reason to think otherwise. Uh, back in the 1980s, I was working in the UK, and uh, I remember uh, appearing as a speaker with a representative of the Cement and Concrete Association named George Barnbrook, and he talked about liquid hardeners, and he was guarded in his uh, recommendation of them. Uh, he felt that they weren't needed if concrete was properly cured and finished, which is also the current position in, in ACI 302, uh, and, um, but that they might be useful as a remedy for defective work. Uh, then I became aware of the research done by Saad Exadi and Kettle, uh, two researchers at Aston University in the UK, who did some laboratory tests where they tried to l look at the improvement in wear resistance from two liquid hardeners, and they found there was some improvement. Uh, it was modest, but it was significant. So with that in mind, I went about my business, and part of my business is measuring the wear resistance of floors with a Chaplin abrasion tester. Yes. Well, 
Well, substantial. It's a, it's a, substan it's a substantial improvement. Uh, it is smaller than we see from some of the manufacturers' claims, but it's substantial. We address that part. It's, it's substantial. Uh, so, um, but I'm, I'm always skeptical of, of claims that, well, really, I'm skeptical of almost any claims. That's just the kind of guy I am. And I'm particularly skeptical of claims that come from manufacturers, even though I've worked with them and I've been behind some of those claims. Uh, but I tend to be skeptical of them, and I tend to put more credence in uh, academic research. But I tend to put the most credence in things that I see with my own eyes and my own testing. So over the course of my career, I've had the chance to measure the wear resistance of floors with liquid hardeners. And it's actually a fairly long list, but some of them didn't make it into the article because there wasn't always a control. Sometimes I would just measure a floor that had a hardener, and it might be good, it might not be good, but who's to say how much the hardener contributed to it? But I was able to identify six projects where there was something close to a controlled experiment. There was a piece of concrete that had been treated with hardener. There was a piece of concrete that hadn't been treated with hardener. And I concede that some of these tests were done under conditions that might not have been favorable to the hardeners. But they were done under a variety of conditions. Old floors, new floors, floors where the hardener had just been applied, floors where the hardener had been there a long time, different chemical compositions of hardener. And in not one of these six cases could I find a significant improvement in resistance to wear. So again, that, that, that doesn't prove they don't work. It doesn't prove that they can never work. But it tells me that they don't work consistently. And if, if it requires a special set of conditions for these hardeners to produce a significant improvement in wear resistance, then I do have a problem with that. Because these products are not marketed as something to be used as a possible remedy where something goes wrong and you might try it on a small scale and see if it works. They're marketed as products that can be used across the board on new construction, and they are widely used in that way. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I won't tell you what to think. I certainly won't say that these products don't work or that they can't work. But because of what I've seen, I have a problem recommending them to my clients as, as routine fixes for the problem of poor wear resistance in concrete. Thank you. Um, we've got about one minute. Would you like to uh, uh, respond? Sure. Is, do you have any response? No, my, my response is, is one, and, and I think I said this before, you know, it is not bulletproof. It doesn't work everywhere. And I'd love to sit down with you later and, and from both our standpoints, go over it. Because, you know, as I said, and as as George said, you know, it's, it doesn't work everywhere. And, and the mix, the finish, you know, everything you have to look at. But I can say from the standpoint of, you know, just from reading, that some of the ways that you looked at things and measured isn't how we would look and measure and, and anticipate whether something worked or not. Um, and we would not compare abrasion resistance of concrete to toppings, which you did with coatings and with the metal shake harder. If a metal shake harder is not harder than a densified floor, something's wrong. But the metal shake hardener still benefits from densification because the cement still holds it in place. And the cement itself can dust, and this does tie it up so it doesn't dust, and it gives more integrity to the floor. So there are absolutely times that it's not the appropriate thing, but it's also, I, I think we got away from really comparing apples to apples. You were comparing more toppings th than the concrete. Okay, um, our time's up, but uh, thank you very much.